anterior cruciate ligament surgery with hamstring autograft. Traditional interference screw and all inside with graft link. Anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, reconstruction with hamstring autografts has been consistently successful with a long track record. Techniques are continuing to evolve to make the surgery even better. Newer techniques involve a drilling femoral tunnels independently from the tibial tunnel. This can be done by drilling through the medial portal, medial accessory portal, or reverse drilling with a retrograde technique. Our preferred technique has evolved to using a retrograde socket and suspension fixation with a quadruple semitendinosus tendon graft. This allows circumferential graft healing. Using a quadrupled semitendinosus graft has provided a consistently larger graft than the traditional semitendinosus and gracilis graft. An alternative technique is to use absorbable screws for fixation. If that particular technique is desired, then the hamstring graft harvest steps are taken, and tunnel can be drilled, and graft passed and secured as in the technique described. Indications. Active individual with an acute tear of the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL. Individual with a chronic tear of the ACL with recurrent instability, who has failed non-operative treatment. A sedentary individual, who displays instability related to his slash her ACL deficient knee with daily activities. Contraindications. Active knee infection. Lack of neurovascular control. A sedentary individual without demonstrable instability. Significant arthrosis, without instability. Uncorrected malalignment, may be corrected concurrently. Individual with previous hamstring harvest or concern for lack of size of graft. Preoperative preparation. Imaging. Knee radiographs to assess for arthritis, alignment and fractures, anteroposterior, lateral, and skyline. Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, to assess soft tissues in the knee including ACL, posterior cruciate ligament, PCL, medial collateral ligament, MCL, lateral collateral ligament, posterolateral corner, meniscus, osteochondral injury, and loose bodies. Physical examination. Assess range of motion and degree of inflammation slash effusion, full extension and greater than or equal to 90 degree flexion prior to surgery will decrease risk of postoperative arthrofibrosis, may necessitate preoperative physical therapy. Okay, we're going to start the physical examination, Lachman test. Physical examination of the knee very important now. As you see, there is laxity. It's very really great evidence for the ACL rupture. And anterior drawer test. Anterior drawer test just like this. Just like this. Sorry. Yes. And the old shift test. Relax, relax. 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 Yes, now. Yes. You can focus on the knee. Focus on the knee. Very great. Relax. Again, relax. Yes. Thanks. Preoperative preparation. Assess stability anteriorly slash posteriorly as well as varus slash valgus and rotational stability. Assess for concurrent meniscal pathology. Document neurovascular examination. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. Position of the patient supine on the operating room table. The patient's position should allow for knee flexion during the procedure. 
the contralateral extremity should be padded to avoid pressure on susceptible areas. Leg holder or post. Thigh tourniquet, rarely inflated. General, epidural, or spinal anesthetic. Routine arthroscopic setup and routine orthopedic surgical instruments. Tibial and femoral alignment guides for positioning the tunnel guide pins. Tendon stripper. If all inside, technique used. Femoral and tibial fixation devices. Bone socket reamers. If interference screw used. Femoral and tibial guides and reamers. Absorbable interference screws. Tips and pearls. Note that graft diameter has been demonstrated to correlate with patient height. If it appears a small graft will be obtained, consideration should be given to harvesting both the semitendinosus and gracilis or supplementing the graft in some other way. It is critical to clearly visualize and divide the semitendinosus attachment to the medial head of the gastrocnemius, 5 to 10 cm proximal to the pairs, otherwise the tendon stripper may follow this band and prematurely amputate the graft. Pull hard and get the graft out of the incision for better visualization of its bands. If there are separated fibers or split tendon during the graft harvest, cut those immediately and incorporate these structures with the proximal graft to avoid continuous splitting. Tips and pearls. If all inside, technique used. Arthroscopic portals should be generously sized to allow passage of guides and the graft, particularly the medial portal. A small clamp can be used to dilate the portal. Caution should be exercised when inserting an outside in guide pin since it can be deflected by the acute angle to the cortex and enter the joint 1 to 2 mm more distal slash inferior on the femoral side and anterior on the tibial side. When using a retrograde reamer, Start the ream off the bone to prevent skiving off from center starting point. Cheat perpendicular to the bone when drilling. Use the starting drill to establish the initial trajectory and then use the retrograde reamer. Tips and pearls. If using an all inside technique, make sure the graft passes easily through a graft sizer. This will help avoid difficulty in docking the graft. Measure the whip stitched ends of the graft to ensure that at least 15 to 20 millimeters of each graft end is docking into the tunnel. Clear the entrance to all tunnels especially for the tibial side intraarticularly so that there is no problem with soft tissue interposition. Arthroscopic resection of some of the fat pad will allow easier graft passage and visualization through the medial portal. A safety stitch through the closed loop on the tibial side will allow traction without tightening the loop. What to avoid? Take some time with the initial guide pin. Wrong placement of the guide pin the first time makes it difficult to change the direction once there is a tract. Avoid pulling the femoral fixation button beyond iliotibial, IT, band or skin instead of just through the cortical bone. Fluoroscopy can be used to confirm the button position, or alternatively the scope can be used to follow the traction sutures down to the button to confirm that the button is on bone. If the button has been advanced too far, gently apply traction on the femoral sutures to align the button longitudinally and pull on the tibial side to retract the button through an enlarged incision on IT band. Avoid tightening the closed loop sutures. Prematurely when applying traction to the graft. If sutures are overtensioned closing the loop, they can be tied to a post to secure the graft. Operative technique approach for knee arthroscopy. Position the patient supine and as distally as possible on the operating room table to allow for knee hyperflexion later in the procedure. Apply a thigh tourniquet as proximal as possible on the leg. Pad pressure points and the contralateral Achilles tendon. Examine the knee and leg after adequate anesthesia is obtained. 
This examination under anesthesia should assess medial, lateral, anterior, and posterior knee stability, including pivot shift. Document the examination. Prepare and drape the surgical leg in the hospital's routine manner. Exsanguinate if the tourniquet is inflated at this point. Alternatively, exsanguination and tourniquet inflation may be done later in the procedure at the time of graft harvesting. Try to minimize tourniquet time because increased tourniquet use can increase postoperative leg atrophy. Arthroscopic evaluation and notchplasty. Make routine arthroscopic portals. If desired, an inflow portal is made superior and either medial or lateral to the patella into the suprapatella pouch. The medial and lateral joint line portals are made just to the side of the patella tendon and are used for instruments and the 30 degree arthroscope figure. These portals should be generously sized and dilated to allow for guide and graft passage. Arthroscopic evaluation and notchplasty. Perform a standard arthroscopic knee evaluation in a systematic manner. Examine the suprapatellar pouch, patellar femoral joint, lateral gutter, medial gutter, medial compartment, intercondylar notch, and lateral compartment. This systematic approach allows an adequate assessment of the menisci, ligaments, and tendons about the knee. Confirm the ACL tear. Repair or resect the menisci as appropriate. Remove any loose bodies. Evaluate any chondral injuries. Debride and treat them if appropriate. Hamstring graft harvest and preparation. Make a 3 cm vertical incision centered on the PES ansign tendon attachment. Start 2 to 4 cm medial to tibial tubercle and approximately 5 to 7 cm inferior to the joint line. Control any bleeders and dissect down to the periosteum using medicine bound scissors. Avoid the crossing branch of the infrapatellar saphenous nerve. Initially use Senrake retractors superficially and then an Army Navy retractor deeper. Use a small sponge to bluntly dissect soft tissue adhesions and subcutaneous fat to get down to the fascia over the sartorius. Palpate the gracilis, proximal, round and prominent, and semitendinosus tendons, slightly distal, flat and wider. Incise the sartorius fascia above the gracilis horizontally in line with the tendon or use a hockey stick incision in the fascia to enhance exposure. Harvest both tendons for a traditional quadrupled hamstring autograft or harvest just the semitendinosus tendon for a quadrupled semitendinosus autograft. A right-angled clamp can be used to hook the tendon and deliver it out the incision. Be careful not to capture the emsal. Having the knee flexed at 90 degrees during harvest is helpful, since the emsal fibers are oriented at the medial epicondyl, whereas the hamstring tendons are oriented to the ischial tuberosity figure. Use a Metzenbaum scissors to clear away adhesions and free the tendon distally. Wrap a Penrose drain around the tendon to aid in pulling the graft. Clear all major adhesions, bands to semitendinosus distally slash bands to medial head of gastrocnemius, 8 to 10 cm proximal to pes, with scissors under direct visualization by pulling on the graft end firmly. Place the long end of the Army Navy retractor under the fascia to assist in exposing these bands. Cut the tendon as distally as possible using a periosteal elevator to get the final insertional fibers off bone. Hold the tendon end with an Alice clamp and place a zero fiber wire whip stitch going up and down 3 cm to hold the graft. 
Confirm that the tendon is free of adhesions by ensuring that the skin does not pucker when the medial head of the gastrocnemius is pulled. Hold the graft firmly while using a closed tendon stripper to gently follow the tendon upward in line with the hamstring trajectory. As the tendon stripper is being inserted proximally, do not twist the instrument or apply excessive force. Either action risks cutting the graft short. Maintain firm constant tension on the graft while advancing the tendon stripper. This will allow the tendon to be stripped free from the muscle belly. On the back table, use the edge of a metal ruler to clean off any remaining muscle and soft tissue from the hamstring tendon. If using distal interference screw fixation, use zero fiber wire to place a whip stitch on the free end of the hamstring tendon graft. Ideally, the semitendinosus tendon should have a minimum length of 280 mm if quadrupled. Assess the diameter and length of the graft if quadrupled by measuring with sizing tubes. If a quadrupled semitendinosus is insufficient, then the gracilis may be harvested. Half of the graft is passed through the tibial closed loop, then the two limbs are passed through the femoral closed loop, and the free ends are tucked in between the tibial strands on the tibial side. Place three circlage sutures with buried knots through the graft at 10 and 20 mm from both ends. Figure. Lay the proximal graft through the loop of a cortical fixation device. Mark the flip distance of the cortical fixation device on the loop. If 40 mm tunnel, mark 40 mm distal from the inferior tip of the button, so that you know when the button has cleared the cortex. Mark the tendon based on the amount of graft desired in the tunnel. If planning to place 20 mm of tendon in the tunnel, then mark at 20 mm from the end of the tendon. Put the graft under 20 pounds of tension on a graft prep station to limit creep. Measure graft to your meter for tunnel width. Cover the graft with moist sponge to prevent drying out. Procedure for ACL Reconstruction Place a bump underneath the knee to aid flexion. Let the leg hang off the table so the knee is at a 90 degree angle. Debride the ruptured ACL stump proximally and distally, with care taken to leave a small footprint to guide tunnel placement. If needed, perform a notch blasty. Use the shaver or 5.5 mm burr depending on the amount of bone desired to be removed. Mark the location of the tunnels using a radio frequency device or all. Procedure for ACL reconstruction. Switch the arthroscope to the medial portal to assess the potential tunnel location. Ideally, a 2 mm back wall should remain around the 10.30 o'clock position on a right knee, 1.30 o'clock position on a left knee. With the arthroscope in the medial portal, insert a retrograde rema guide through the lateral portal and place it on the desired location. Incise the skin and IT band to advance the drill guide to bone, figure. Drill with starter drill and then insert the bone socket retrograde rema, mallet the drill guide into subchondral bone, and ream using the retrograde rema. Femoral socket drilling. The knee should be flexed to approximately 90 degrees. The scope is placed through the medial portal, and the femoral guide is placed through the lateral portal. A starter guide pin is drilled through the guide, followed by the appropriate retrograde reamer to create a socket at least 25 mm deep, without reaming through the femoral cortex. A passing stitch is placed into the knee. Place a stiffened suture through retrograde rema guide to put a suture inside the knee joint. Use ring grasper from lateral portal to pull the stiffened suture out and park it in the lateral portal and secure it with a hemostat. This will serve as the fem oral tunnel passing suture. Set up the tibial tunnel by looking from the lateral portal and inserting the retrograde rema guide from the medial portal set at 57 degrees, figure. 
Place the guide tip in the ideal position anterior to PCL by 7 mm and in line with posterior aspect of anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Note the pin often comes out more anterior than it appears. Tibial socket drilling. The knee should be flexed to approximately 90 degrees. The scope is placed through the lateral portal, and the tibial guide is placed through the medial portal. The tibial guide is normally set at approximately 55 to 60 degrees. Take care to position the starting point as distal as possible on the anterior tibiae, in order to maximize the length of the tibial tunnel. The tibial guide is inserted so that the intraarticular guide pin enters the joint through the posterior half of the ACL's tibial footprint. A starter guide pin is drilled through the guide, followed by the appropriate retrograde reamer to create a socket at least 35 mm deep, without reaming through the tibial cortex. A passing stitch is placed into the knee. Place drill sleeve through the hamstring harvest incision down to bone. Confirm acceptable bone tunnel, greater than 30 mm, by measuring off the guide and ream out the tunnel leaving the cortex for a bony bridge. Clean off the tibial tunnel to allow button to sit flush. Place a different colored stiffened suture up through the tibial tunnel. This will serve as the tibial tunnel passing suture. Use a grasper to pull this suture and the passing suture from the femoral tunnel through the same enlarged medial portal. Tie the femoral tunnel passing suture from the medial portal to the traction sutures for the femoral button fixation device. Similarly, tie the tibial passing suture from the medial portal to the traction sutures for the tibial loop. Use the femoral tunnel passing suture to gently pull the proximal cortical button through medial portal and into the femoral tunnel looking for the marked flip distance. Flip the button with back and forth motion on the traction sutures. Pull back on the tibial side of the graft to confirm that the button is locked on the femoral side. Confirm the button is resting on cortical bone by following the traction sutures through the lateral skin with the arthroscope. The scope allows visualization by following the exiting lateral pull sutures through the skin, and seeing the button on top of bone below the IT band. Alternatively, a mini C-arm can be used to confirm accurate button placement against cortical bone. Gradually apply tension to the loop tightening sutures to bring the predetermined amount of graft into the tunnel. Use the tibial tunnel passing suture to pull the distal graft end through the medial portal and down into the tibial tunnel. Use a free suture within the tibial fixation loop to help avoid inadvertent tightening of the loop prior to the button resting on the cortex figure. Cycle the knee 10 times to confirm graft isometry. Load the tibial fixation button onto the loop and cinch it down onto the cortex with the knee in extension and a posterior draw force applied to the tibia. Scope the knee to make sure graft is tight. Tie the whip stitch sutures onto the button for backup fixation. Irrigate and close the wounds. Place the leg in a hinged knee post-op brace. I want to thank Professor Ahmed Turan Aydin who contributed my orthopedic sports medicine surgery knowledge and changed my life.